whenever I write solos, I like to kind of take a step back and hear the, the backing that I'm going to be soloing over. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll listen to it and I'll sing in my head like, and then like kind of for melodies like that, I just have it in my head and then I'll be like, and I'll come up with it that way. And, what, and a way that I write solos as well is kind of a modern way of doing things, but I'll set up like GarageBand or whatever on my computer and then I'll just put the backing in and then I'll just do a whole bunch of different takes on different tracks and, I, and I'll listen back and then um, if I come up with something really cool then I'll keep that and I'll use that. Uh, if some of them I'm not happy with I won't use and then I'll just pick up my favourite parts and kind of create it that way but sometimes my, most of the full and reverse solos are, are kind of pretty short because um, I like kind of short snappy solos. So when I wrote the solos for well, when I write the solo for the Dragon Man's here, I just wanted to do some almost kind of uh, classical sounding arpeggiated, classical inf influenced arpeggios, but I had a real short space of time to do it. So I wanted it to just be crazy, but then have the little melodic kind of motifs in the middle. And I was really happy with how it came up. And I wanted to mix in some kind of sweep tapping in there because for no other reason, then I think it sounds really cool. Okay, so for the Dragon Mears U solo, we're going to start with some five string arpeggios and three string ones. So for the first one, I'm going to be doing one of the minor shapes that we talked about earlier. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, hammer on to the 17th fret on the high E string when we get there and I'm going to mute it. I'm going to staccato it off, so, so we're going to kill it. So that's our first arpeggio. Okay, then we're going to drop down diatonically using three string shapes. I'm going to drop down and I'm going to play a, a major three string arpeggio. And we're going to do the same thing when we land on the 15th fret high E string, we're going to kill it off. Okay, then we're going to go back up to the uh, top three strings of the five string arpeggio. Again, killing it off at the end. So together we have... Back to the uh, 12th fret one. Okay, then down to the 10th fret one. So here's how that sounds slow.
Now here he's up to speed. So that is the beginning. Okay, so once we come out of that arpeggio section, I'm gonna play a little melody here and we're gonna repeat it twice. So when we land on the 15th fret, I'll kind of do like a little half or quarter step bend, I don't know. So. Then I'm going to go up to the uh, 20th fret, whole tone, then. Then I'm going to slide for the 17th fret to the 19th. And this is a cool little slide thing that I like to do in my phrasing sometimes. When I get up to the 19th fret, I'm going to hammer onto the 20th fret really abruptly with my uh, middle finger pull off and then slide back to the uh, 17th. So it sounds like this. I like to do this a lot, um, hammer on to wrong notes that aren't in the kind of diatonic scale and then ha hammer on to them, pull off really quick and slide back and it sounds, kind of reminds me of a saxophone or something like that. So I think it sounds pretty cool. So we got. Okay, so here's what it sounds like, Sly. And here is it up to speed. So after them bends, we're going to go into some more arpeggios and they're going to be based off the same ones that we covered in the beginning, but this time we're going to be applying some tapping and I like to use my pick for the tapping because it allows me to jump back into a sweeping motion, whereas if it's my finger, it's kind of a little bit weird. Um, so I'm going to tap with my pick on the... I'm going to tap on the 22nd and the 20th frets, and the tapping will remain the same throughout the sequence. So, um, it's this section. <laughs> Okay, so um, played slow is going to sound like this.
is how it sounds up to speed.